Hello everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite handheld systems growing up, besides the Game Boy, and that would be the Atari Lynx. So stick around. Ah uh, yes, the Atari Lynx, the underdog of the handheld systems at the time of the trifecta between the Game Boy and the Sega Game Gear, sitting squished in the middle of it all, Atari trying their best in conjunction with Epic's to put together a handheld system for the masses and take advantage of that new market of handheld gaming and the latest technology that was available at the time. And let me tell you, this was top-end technology for 1989. So this is actually the uh, second version of the Atari Lynx. It came out about a year or so after the original Atari Lynx, the OG model. Uh, it wasn't as streamlined as this. It was a little, little bigger. This I ended up getting as part of a... Basically, I, I, I took my original back and I traded in. I was pretty good friends with the people working in Electronics Boutique at the time. So when this came out, this newer model, uh, actual size, I went back and he's like, you know what? No problem. You got the original box and everything, which I did because I was very weird about keeping my boxes at the time. I was 16 years old when the original Lynx came out and uh, probably going on 17 when this one came out because I think this came out in 1990 or so. It was about a year later. And I remember taking this to uh, high school and playing it in study hall during my senior year of high school even. So yeah, I'm an old fart. <laughs> In any case, as you can see, it was reduced at that point to $99.99. And it's got the original sticker on it. This is the box from it. Enjoy super full color video game action wherever you go. And French version of it. The box is pretty cool though. Gives you a little previews of some of the games. Tells you what is included, which is the AC adapter, which is not included. And I remember that was something I had to go out and buy separately, which I already had because I had bought the original Lynx at the time. Six AA batteries, which would last about maybe two hours if you were lucky. A cigarette lighter adapter. And let's get in French. So, uh, got a little more preview, some of the titles. Now, I was a huge Game Boy fan at the time. I had tons of Game Boy games. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was arguably the system to go to for a vast library. However, uh, I was also a bit of a gaming junkie at the time. I had pretty much every system on the planet as of 1989, 1990. So uh, when this came, except for the Game Gear, funny enough, my sister had that, but uh, I, something I had to give. But in any case, this offered something different that I thought that either of the other systems offered. And that was something that I very much enjoyed, which was arcade games. Uh, which is one of the reasons I was a big fan of the Sega Genesis at the time. Uh, and it's pretty dead-on approximation for home arcade in your hands, or at home in general. Uh, you have Rygar, here's some of them right here, Rygar, Road Blasters, Xenophobe, Rampage. These were Paperboy. These were all big arcade games that I, I enjoyed at the time, uh, from Atari and otherwise. Here's a Tecmo. Tecmo, for whatever reason, uh, supported the system. Uh, Ninja Gaiden and uh, Rygar and uh, yeah uh, other than the Atari and the Tengen releases such as Klax did a pretty good job. This system was created in conjunction with a couple programmers from uh, who, who were working on the Amiga at the time and uh, in Epix. Uh, some of the guys drew it out on a napkin together at lunch. They wanted to get in on the market as early as 1986, 87. Uh, but they had some trouble getting together the resources and, most importantly, a distributor. And that's when, uh, after walking it around a bit, Nintendo turned their eyes and frowned on it. Of course, why would they want to accept this? It's the competitor, and it's Atari. Atari burned them before. Um, so uh, they ended up going to Atari, and Atari distributed it. And at that point in the game, 1989-1990, Atari was kind of a has-been. They were mostly known for their arcade uh, work at the time because the Nintendo uh, Entertainment System and pretty much chewed them up and spit them out, which was probably for the better at that point. 
because um, it took us out of the video game crash as we knew it and uh, yeah so as much as I love my Game Boy and I do it's my favorite handheld I have a very very soft spot for the Atari Lynx and what it provided so what I'm going to do is this is the box uh, there's really nothing to it it's an empty box because I keep everything in my Lynx carrying case here uh, luggage bag which was the official Atari Lynx uh, suitcase at the time. So what I thought I'd do is I'm going to open this up and show you everything that I had for the system at the time. It includes everything that's in here is from my childhood, and it still works um, over 30 years later because I took care of my things, even as a kid. So one thing I didn't like about this is uh, the games would kind of fall over. It didn't secure them very well, so... Bear with me here. I'm going to try to open this and hopefully they won't go flying. Here, something fell already. Yeah. One guy fell. So, this is the case. Put the box back here, maybe help me hold it up. And the games I owned. So, uh, we've got quite a bit of games here because I was crazy about the system just as much as I was crazy about the. Uh, the Game Boy at the time, and uh, let me see if I can give you a quick view of, uh, let me adjust this camera a little bit, we gotta go up a little bit higher, there you go. Um, let me just give you a rundown of the software real quick that I have here. Here's Gauntlet, which was not an arcade port, it was a custom game sequel made for Link specifically. And it took me a little bit of time to figure out if I really liked it. It kind of grew on me a little bit over the years. Uh, it's not dead on like the arcade, but it, it kind of had its nature. So, uh, Rampage, the aforementioned Rygar. Now, uh, the thing about Rygar here is this is the arcade port. It is not like the Nintendo Entertainment System version, which everybody knows and loves. California games came with the system. Xenophobe, another fantastic arcade port. We've got Popeye. Oh, Popeye. <laughs> Paperboy. It's a Zendikon, which is a side-scrolling shooter that uh, was original to the Atari Lynx at the time. Zybots, one of my favorite arcade games. It's almost like a cybernetic, futuristic version of Gauntlet. Miss Pac-Man, very good port. M included the handy-dandy speed-up mode, which is the only way to play Miss Pac-Man. Todd's Adventures in Slime World. This was originally an exclusive game for the Atari Lynx that um, ended up on other systems at the time. Funny enough, it even came out on the what we know as the Turbo Graphics, but in Japan is the PC Engine. Uh, there was a CD version of this with this crazy anime intro and some neat music. It was a fun little game. By the way, you might have noticed these are really cool uh, thin cartridges. I mean, they're very reminiscent of the cue cards from uh, the Turbo Graphics and uh, PC Engine. Uh, going down here, we got Ast Electrocop. Electrocop and Zendikon, I remember getting free uh, when I, I think it was when I got this revision of the system. You could mail in for them. Ninja Gaiden, once again, another Tecmo game that is not the Nintendo Entertainment System version, but the uh, arcade, an arcade port. So it plays a lot closer to the arcade. Uh, Blockout, which was a bit of a Tetris clone from uh, above. Uh, the pieces would fall in like a three, almost like a three-dimensional grid kind of thing. Warbirds, which was a, um, a dueling fighter uh, jet, or not fighter jet, because it's set in the uh, like 1920s uh, with these uh, biplanes. Very fun game. Uh, very, very fun game. My father had a Lynx, and he bought it just to play this with me. We used to link it together. I finally, one of my favorite arcade ports, I think the best arcade port is Clax. Uh, and another uh, Lynx original, Blue Lightning. Tries to recapture a little bit of that afterburner feel. So real quick, I'm going to take you through uh, some of the accessories. Here's the cigarette lighter adapter. You have to excuse the wiring, even though I kept good care of my stuff. The wires were another nature. Um, in themselves, here's the adapter, which is this huge brick. You really needed that thing if you were going to play it. Um, anywhere but home. At home, I mean, the batteries, when you took it anywhere. Uh, this is the link cable. You can link the systems together. 
So uh, everything is in here, kind of in the remote compartments. And finally, here is the Lynx system itself. One thing always bothered me about it, before I forget, you can see it's got a scratch right there, which drives me crazy. I remember getting that scratch at the time, and I don't remember how it happened. I'm assuming it may have been maybe one of the games fell. I don't know. But this plastic that they used is awful. Uh, it is nothing like as durable as, say, like the uh, Game Boys was. But it's very, very fragile and delicate. It's it's It reminds me of the plastic that they would use on a... Um, on ski goggles, you know, it's like that real look at it and blink it scratched uh, material. So I'm going to pull this uh, stuff away here a minute. And uh, I'm going to lower the camera back down a little, oops, a little bit more. And I want to take a look at the system here. Um, so what was neat about this, it's very similar actually in a way that the uh, Japanese uh, handheld Wanderswan uh, worked because it was able to be played uh, depending on your orientation, I guess. It had, it had separate sets of buttons. Now, that doesn't say, I mean, you could play it like this as a lefty or a righty, but it made it more comfortable for you to play over here or over here. Because this system allowed you to play vertically oriented games, and one of them was uh, Klax. And... Um, after we do all this, I'll show you some of the games and how they run on it, and especially want to highlight that feature. So this system has a D-pad, clicky D-pad, not the greatest D-pad, but functional. On button, off button, a backlight button. Now this backlight button does not adjust the brightness. Uh, it just turns the screen on and off. The brightness button is actually up here. It's a little knob. Very similar to like the Game Gear. Uh, option, you have an option button here, which would come into play in the course of just as an extra button. I think of it as almost like a select button on a Nintendo system. Uh, same with an option one and two. They would each do different things. Uh, in games such as Clax, you were able to flip the screen uh, in like a mirror. So you could play it like this, or you could play it like this. And um, yeah. But, uh, you know, I could be wrong. I just don't remember experiencing any games, and I think of that, because the A, B, and B buttons are facing a different direction, so maybe you could play it like this. I just never did, or never noticed it personally, in my uh, experience with the system. And then, um, yeah, you have like a reset button. Some of these buttons are a little over the top, because you never really used them. Uh, so we have a volume button up here, and, uh, oh, what game did I have in here? Road Blasters one of my favorites. It's such a great game. And the, the port to this Lynx is, is amazing. Anyway, we'll get on that later. Uh, yeah, so we got the volume button up here. We have the uh, headphone jack here. We have the Comlinx button. Uh, no, not button. I'm sorry. The jack. And then the Comlinx jack here. The Comlinx would allow you to hook up I believe, it's, I think it was I don't know if it's his on here. I think you're able to, to hook up eight Eight systems total? I can't remember offhand. It doesn't say. Uh, let's see, do we have a manual? I don't know if we have the manual. Have the manual? Ah, I have the box to the uh, sun visor, which I never used. I don't know where the sun visor itself is. Ah, yes, we do have the manual. We do indeed have the manual here. Why? I. I wasn't sure if I even opened the manual, let's say. Mm -mm. Let's see, are we able to... Uh, now it's driving me crazy. It just says to connect the other link systems separately. I want to say it was like six to eight systems, though. But, it may... Let's see. The maximum number of players depends on the game. So... I almost even want to say it may have been able to handle, um, may have been able to help handle uh, 12, 12 systems at once. In any case, we won't dwell on that right now. And instead, we'll continue on with uh, what we're doing here. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, the system runs on, um, if I'm not mistaken, it, it runs on a bit of a hybrid of an Amiga system. 
the, the Amiga architecture. On the back of the system, you have uh, uh, these clips here, which, if I recall, you uh, would allow you to attach. Uh, is it a battery pack of some sort? You had these rubber grips over here to grip. It's, it's, it's a hefty system, but it's not too heavy. Um, and under here, you have the infamous battery port, which I'm not going to open for the sake of the video, but it takes six AA batteries. And this hatch can be a bit of a pain to snap back on, and I don't feel like I'm going to waste anybody's time doing that. But let me assure you, there are six fresh batteries in there. Normally, I would play this on the AC, but we're not going to do that today. Um, but anyway, it's definitely one of my favorite systems, um, of, of uh, handheld systems especially. Right up there with the Game Boy. For different reasons. Here's the speaker over here. You can kind of see it through the grill. Uh, it didn't have the loudest sound as we will discover. You had to really maximize the volume. And uh, that has nothing to do with the age of the system. I just don't recall it ever being very loud at all. And I'm probably going to have to strain to show you. So since we have road blasters in here, let's start that off with road blasters. Maybe a little hard to film. I'm going to do my best here. All right, turn this on. Now, once again, this is a 1989 handheld using, can you hear that? So what I'm saying is you're not going to get the greatest um, screen here. Okay, you're going to have some, a little bit of a, a foggy looking effect, but I'm going to do my best to try to show everybody what's going on here. Just like the arcade, you're able to pick your starting point. So the objective in this game is to move back and forth, shoot the enemy cars. And this game came out on the original Nintendo. It came out on the Genesis, amongst many PC ports here in America and in the UK, and across the world in general. Uh, personally, this is a fantastic port of the arcade game regardless of handheld or console the fact that this fits in a portable system is pretty amazing to be honest with you and it plays very well oh died just as i got to the finish line listen it even has some of the vocals from the game so so i figured what we'll do is we're going to go through and I will take you on a quick tour of some of the software that we have for this system. Let's see if everything spilled out. No, everything did not spill out, as a matter of fact. But my backdrop is falling over, which I was hoping wouldn't happen. I was trying to adjust the lighting a little bit. Let's do this. Let's do this here. Let's move this out of the way. Put this here. Let's see if that works. Let's move it. Okay, <laughs> let's fix that. So, uh, what's next here? Let's start off, I want to show you a couple of the differences. I'm going to start off with uh, I was looking at uh, Ninja Gaiden. Everybody knows this from the NES version, not the arcade version. And I want to show everybody how the differences... In many ways, I kind of think it's cool that it's more of an arcade port. I know people prefer the NES port of this game, but the fact that they were able to squeeze this game into the into a handheld and tried to stay faithful to the arcade. Now, I haven't played this in a very long time. You're going to have to bear with me here. I know you can flip and throw guys, if I'm not mistaken. There you go. So anyway, the arcade was more of a beat-em-up. Just like this. So what you're seeing is, is much closer to, to the arcade than uh, the um, NES one was. That said, I do kind of prefer the NES version more. But still, to have this faithful recreation of the arcade was pretty top-notch at the time. 
Now I apologize again for the quality of this. I mean, the, the, this is very hard to film these old systems with these LCDs at the time. All right, so that's Rygar. Or, <laughs> I did it again. That is Ninja Gaiden. Rygar is what I'm going to show you next. Another game uh, that the NES uh, took and... Uh, ooh, that one didn't take. Let's see. Push it off, maybe. So I know at the time a lot of... Um, Nintendo Entertainment System games couldn't be ported properly. Just based on the technology, and they had to stream things, stream uh, some things back, and uh, take take little shortcuts. But at the same time, I also feel there was the want and need to give people who spent forty dollars or whatnot on an NES, NES cartridge more than a what could technically be a twenty-minute arcade game. They wanted people to have more of an experience that they could take home and get more value for their money. And uh, I think in, that, in a lot of cases that goes to play. There are a lot of Nintendo arcade games, uh, ports rather, that I think are pretty good and in some ways superior, such as Bionic Commando. Um, but in this case, I, I actually do like the Rygar arcade game. So for me, this was cool to have at the time. And once again, I mean, it looks great. I mean, it plays very well. I play it on my uh, modded Arcade 1-Up all the time, actually. And it's a very faithful port of the arcade. You see it's got very nice parallax scrolling back there. You could stun these guys if you land on them properly. So that's Rygar. There's some other good ones here. Let me, um, yeah, see, this is the problem with this case. All the games would fall out on me. So a lot of times what I would do is double decker them. Plus I didn't have enough space for them all. Um, there's a couple games that I always wanted for this that I never got. And uh, I kind of kicked myself because one of them um, I saw recently at a game show. It was only like 12 bucks. And I don't know why I didn't grab it. I think I kind of lost track of it. It was the uh, Elvira Pinball. And I really should have picked it up. So I'm going to show you one of the examples of how the vertical uh, screen uh, gameplay works uh, with Clax here. Now Clax was a horizontal screen arcade game. You know, I'm just not pushing these in hard enough. That's what I think the problem is. Well, maybe not. Let's see. It is older. Well, I don't know. You know, I should probably clean these things off. These, just like the Game Boy cartridges, these can kind of get a little grubby. And it's not not like in this game. I don't know what's going on. I think we're in business now. Okay. All right. So this this is the game here. Now, let's see if I can get everybody to see this properly. It's a really nice port of the arcade. And one thing I really liked about it was all the speech. Now, I'm going to try to play this while filming. So one of the, the cool things about this game, as I was saying... So you gotta match up the colors. Like so. And the objective is to get the amount that you're required to fulfill here. So if you do them in different patterns, see like now I'm trying to do these diagonally. You get a bigger bonus down there. All 
All right, so as I was saying earlier, you can flip the screen. I'm trying to remember. I think it's this one. Here's this one. Uh, let's see. Maybe which one is it now? I heard it is. It's a duh. There's a button right there. It says flip. Right? It's supposed to be these two. But it's, oh, there it goes. It's flipping. So now you can play it like this if you wish. Just not used to these buttons. There it goes. So, anyway, that's a cool feature. Um, another game that really takes advantage of it, and it's one of the games I, I wanted to get at the time. One of the games I wanted to get at the time, it was uh, a Raiden. A Raiden, how are you going to say it? Which was a port of the arcade shooter. Um, I'm going to play another arcade favorite of mine. And that would be Sawbolts. Big fan of this game. And uh, th once again, this is just an amazing port. Regar uh, you know, I'm going to have to clean this thing out. I don't think... I don't... The games itself, themselves, rather, look okay. But let's do the blow method. <laughs> right, let's give that a shot. So Zybots is cool because, like I said, it, it's more of like almost like a cybernetic, futuristic version of of um, Gauntlet because you'd have to get energy for health. And, um, you know, it was a quarter muncher. So what we're going to do is uh, give you a little preview. As you can see, these um, these uh, little corridors are almost like a flipbook 3D effect. And what you do is to, when you turn a corner here, you have to hold the button and you flip it. And there's a key, another staple of gauntlet, and over here, energy, sorry, excuse my horrible playing here. I'm trying to film and play at the same time, it's not easy. So there is a secret here. As you can see, there's a keyhole. You hit this. And you get these big bad guys in here. This is a secret room. I always thought that was cool. That means you cleared out the, the entire uh, level of bad guys. This is also a warp. This will take me to level four, five, something like that. So once you go into the warp... Or once you're finished 11, or a level, <laughs> can't speak. Um, it takes you to this little shop here. And uh, all the little coins you've collected throughout the level, so you can buy extra little things like a second shot, a little mapper, shows you where things are on the map. And uh, yeah, you continue on. So let's see what else we got here. California games. I know everybody loves California games, right? So one of the one of the big games um, that was kind of a technical tour de force of the system at the time was this Blue Lightning, because it kind of showed off a lot of the uh, 3D effects um, and scaling abilities of the system. Definitely need to clean this thing out, unfortunately. Yeah. Funny. It seemed to be working just fine before the video. It's usually how it is. And now we're not getting any power. There it goes. I always have trouble with these buttons. They don't have much of a um, a response when you push them. They're a little mushy. See all the scaling and spinning and yeah. 
they made a big fuss about this game when it came out. And when, what you would do is when you go to see demo kiosks for the game system itself, uh, this game would be playing. So it's almost like an afterburner kind of claim. Fire missiles with that. You shoot with this. There's really not a lot to it. Anyway, I have pretty good memories of this game and the system itself. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to do a quick video. This is one of these videos I've been wanting to do for a while now, uh, showing off the system, because I think it was a, a pretty cool little important part of history, especially for Atari. Uh, so nowadays, playing games from this system is really all about emulation. However, uh, there is a new pack out there for the 50th anniversary of... Atari, it's a compilation pack, and uh, Atari's 50th anniversary. It's it's a really well done historical compilation of all the games from Atari, from the inception of Pong up until uh, at least the Jaguar, uh, for games like Tepes 2000. You won't get a lot of the licensed stuff on there, uh, but there are a few Lynx games on there. I actually wish they would have done more. I, I'm a little confused as to why there wasn't a... Um, more of an arcade presence on there because like i said the, the the big pro for this console was these uh, amazing arcade ports at the time and uh, they they definitely were a lot better than anything you would get on say a uh, uh nintendo entertainment system at the time um genesis they were pretty pretty close with uh, the 16-bit era i mean if anything it's a paper boy try. So if you're looking to maybe dabble a little bit in what Lynx has to offer, um, besides the emulation, oh, we're getting back to the insert card again. I'm definitely gonna have to get in there and clean that up. Uh, yeah, emulation really is the way to go. I, I have the um, if you if you can get your hands on an Amber Nick 351V, uh, it's that Chinese bootleg kind of looking system that runs uh, emulation station uh, the emulation on there is fantastic it's it's very well done you can play it on there uh, get just get the games themselves from nefarious sites uh, and uh, load it up the best you can otherwise if you're looking for a quick hit for a couple of the games you could do the uh, Atari 50th collection Although, I really think the offerings are pretty meager. I don't know why they kind of skipped down on it the way they did. But yeah, the Amber Nick 351, it's great just in general for emulating a lot of these old arcade um, and home consoles. And the uh, Lynx emulation on there is fantastic because the emulator uh, is just much more accurate than it's been in the past years. For the links. But anyway, that's about it for today. I just wanted to I'd show off the system. Like I said, this is a video I've been wanting to do for a little while. And um, I hope everybody enjoyed it or got something out of it. If you're interested in the system, they, they don't seem to go for a ton of money. I, I don't know if the market just hasn't caught up to it yet. The games can be had pretty reasonably uh, on the cheaper side. Uh, with the exception of a few uh, genuine rare games. Um, but uh, a lot of the main, the main titles, especially these arcade games, uh, you can pick up on um, at, at decent prices. And um, if you're looking for a way to play it, uh, it's certainly an easy system to collect through, uh, collect for, and uh, you can get a lot of games through uh, eBay and some of the local uh, uh, retro gaming um, conventions and so forth. Uh, you, you'll see them around. And uh, a lot of games can be had for $20, $30 or less.
even 15, 12, such as the Elvira pinball I saw. Uh, but uh, once again, uh, party emulation is the big way to go. The screen, like I said, and yeah, as you can see, isn't the best. It's 1989 technology, and at the time it was fantastic, but it's more or less what you'll see on a Game Gear. And uh, for a lot of people these days, that's pretty much unacceptable, and I, I can understand that. Um, there are mods you can put in there, like an LCD mod. I personally don't have the... Um, I don't know if I really want to take apart my childhood links. I would have to get a second links to do that. I'd be too afraid to mess this thing up because it works great. It's in great physical condition still. Um, and uh, I, I don't really want to stick around with this. I probably could do it um, soldering the screen in and all the wiring and whatnot. Um, but it's also a bit of a pricey mod as well. So, in any case, I uh, once again thank you for joining me on this little look at the Atari Lynx via the Amiga devs and Epics. And I will uh, see you next time.